Hello and welcome. I'm Hi C, and this is Toku Rev, your introduction to tokusatsu movie and TV shows to help you decide what you want to spend your time watching. Today, I'm finding out the mysteries of Shibuya 15. Sometimes I worry that I'll stop finding these lesser-known toku series to cover. Then one just kind of falls into my lap and I can't help but jump right in. That's exactly what happened with Shibuya 15. Their subs for Tokusatsu Gagaga Ga Ga paused at episode 3, and I started noticing the other posts for their main focus, Shibuya 15. With its weird stylized name and pictures of a buff dude in a bad wig, it piqued my interest and I gave it a shot. Shibuya 15 was scripted by Shoji Yanomura and started its life under the name X-Mage, being produced by TMS Entertainment but the production was cancelled, moved to Toei, and renamed Shibuya 15, given to Heisei Kamen Rider directors Ryuta Tazaki with 12 episodes broadcasting between January and March of 2005, receiving a manga adaptation in July of the same year in the magazine Special Effects Ace No. 7 through 10. The manga differs from the televised production, but unfortunately, I don't have access to the magazines or a translation to confirm how much. Welcome to Shibuya, only it's not Shibuya. It's a virtualization that 15-year-olds are trapped inside of. It's stated in the introduction of the show, so the viewer is never left wondering if the world is real. What they are wondering about is why 15-year-olds are trapped in Shibuya. Our main protagonist wakes up with amnesia in a back alley, confused on where and why he's there. He spits up a small piece of paper that reads, Get out of Shibuya. Signed, Rev. He quickly runs into Asagi, a member of the Love Jin Gang, who's being chased by DJ, the leader of the Bakum. You see, Shibuya is divided up by three gangs, representing three distinct locations in Shibuya. First, you have Love Gen, representing the Dogenzaka area, known for its nightlife and personified by Love Hotel Hill. Their gang dress code is typically a short skirt with a hoodie and a rabbit for a logo. Then there's Bunkum, representing the food, arts, and street break dance culture of the Bunkamora complex. Featuring breakdancing and skateboarding, their gang dress code is backwards baseball caps and loose-fitting clothes. Then, we have the most dangerous gang, the Palhands, representing the Koendori area, known for hosting Parco, a fashion shopping mall, and Tokyo Hands department stores. Mixed together, you get Palhands. Their gang dress code is leather jackets, beanies, and generally dressing in black clothes. Their logo is a double skull and crossbones. Gangs stick to their own territories, with the exception of the Koya Tattoo Shop owned by Kengo. Kengo is the only adult who seems like he's connected to the 15-year-olds of Shibuya 15. He offers a respite for the injured, and a place for those who have nowhere else to go. Just be warned, if you eat his food, you're gonna need to work it off. Asagi is looking for a friend Chico and has stumbled into Bakum territory, and our protagonist from the alleyway interrupts, helping her fight off the members of the Bunkum gang. Asagi assumes he's a pal hand. When he asks what a pal hand is, Asagi thinks he's mocking her, knees him in the crotch, and leaves him in the alleyway alone, noticing a surveillance blimp with an eye on it. Everybody and everything is being watched. Wandering the streets, we run into Ryugo, the leader of the Pal Hands. He tells us the main character's name is Shoto, and that he's the lowest ranking member of the Pal Hands, their gopher, taking him to a tied up member of Love Jin, Chico. When Asagi shows up with a bunch of Love Jin girls to rescue her, Shoto switches sides and fights for Love Jin, helping Chico escape. Taking cover in Chico's room, she turns on him, bringing out a knife and trying to kill Shota. She suddenly stops when a symbol appears on her hand. This is the symbol for peace, a built-in system that's part of Shibuya 15. Whenever someone acts out too far or becomes emotionally fragile, they are marked as broken. Similar to Agent Smith of The Matrix, anyone who's an adult can turn into peace. A slender, muscular guy with a bad wig and an intricate design on his chest. If peace targets you, death becomes absolute. Everyone accepts it knowing they can't fight back. When people see someone who's been marked, they announce they must leave, and everyone wishes them a safe journey. Once people have been killed, they're thrown into a recovery car that's actually a trash truck, and people are reprogrammed and show up with a different personality, and everyone's previous memories of that person are erased. As Ryugo corners Shoto, Asagi notices Emma, a girl in a black outfit and a white coat who doesn't belong to any gang. Emma notices Shoto and calls down some glowy, pointy thing and transforms. This is a merge, an ability only Emma controls, with the pointy things being her escorts. 
transforming into a merge of Shibuya 15, putting her in battle armor, known as the Merge Suit. The Merge Suit looks a little cheap, and feels like some extra foam pasted onto a black outfit, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. It's flexible with no bolt, and when it's in movement, I really like its design and concept. I just wish it was a little more designed so it didn't break the illusion of just being soft foam. The Merge Suit gives Emma enhanced abilities and allows her to fight off peace, able to run fast and jump high along with her escort that can be used as a sword or projectile. After Emma fights off Beast, she goes up to Shota, telling him she knew he would come back for her. But Shota doesn't remember her. He doesn't remember anything. He's been erased and restored by Shibuya 15. Emma walks away, telling him he's not Shota and that he shouldn't question this world. And that's pretty much episode one. I don't want to say anything more and risk ruining the mysteries of Shibuya 15. Who is Emma? Who is Shoto? What is Shibuya 15? And why are kids trapped inside of it? And all these questions are better figured out for yourself. Let's talk about the production of Shibuya 15. I'll get this one out of the way first. Shoto is a male character who is played by a female actress. I'm not sure why this choice was made, and while it was confusing at first not knowing what this world was or why it was set up this way, I have no real opinion on the choice. But I'm sure you noticed in the footage that was shown. When I was trying to research into Shibuya 15, I was hoping I could get an answer from a producer or director or why they decided to go with a female lead and not a male lead. But but to the best of my knowledge, no one's actively talked about it. The look of Shibuya 15 is kind of reminiscent of Ultra 7X. It kind of feels like someone just rubbed Vaseline on the camera lens. But here, I think it helps to enhance the experience a bit. You'll get glimpses of the world outside of Shibuya, where they take this effect off, and when they do, those moments have a lot more punch because of the drastic change in color and clarity. That said, I do feel the unfocused look is a little bit of a barrier to watch. Easily my favorite part of watching Shibuya 15 are the fight scenes between Emma and Peace. The wire stunts and fight choreography is really well done and interjects a load of personality. This probably has a lot to do with Peace himself. While I kind of hate his wig, the actor, Mark Musashi, really brings this riddle of a character to life. I already talked about the merge suit, but I'd still like to point out that the CG effects used for her escorts when she battles. It's a really cool way of giving Emma an ethereal weapon without it being a sword, spear, or gun. There are also a few CG machine creatures that, while I don't love, I don't dislike them either. If you've watched a few of my videos, you probably know I can be really rough on computer-designed creatures, but I think the backdrop and context of the world in Shibuya 15 make them a little more palatable. So time for that recommendation. If you're looking for a henshin hero show or an action-packed show, this probably isn't going to scratch that itch. But if you're looking to explore a world and take it in, I think this is a really fun series. The scope of the world never becomes too large. This isn't a series about saving the world. It's about escape and self-realization. I love concepts that play around with nature versus nurture. If I change everything about you and your life, are you still you? Shibuya 15 never goes deep enough to push you into an existential dilemma, but it does make you think from time to time. Discovering Shoto's journey, who he is, what his real name is, what is Shibuya 15, and why does it keep people trapped inside makes it a really interesting mystery. The way the show incorporates different aspects and references to the different personalities you might find in Shibuya Tokyo is a really interesting social commentary. Admittedly, I don't know enough about Japanese social culture to fully appreciate it. I just really enjoy drinking in the world of Shibuya 15. From the mundane shopping trips to seeing what happens when you try to cross the train tracks out of town. So if you're looking for a little special effect mystery show, go on and give Shibuya 15 a watch. And thank you to Love Gen for the subs. I'm always looking for lesser known tokusatsu series. If you like this video, I'd suggest watching my videos on Lion Maru G and Zebra Man. If there's a tokusatsu TV or movie that you think would make a good episode, I look forward to hearing it in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time for more Toku Introductions.